Okay. Uh, welcome back, Spartan Up Podcast. We have the Joe DeSena, the Colonel Nye, the Sephra Alexandra, and the Johnny Wayne. With Miss Marion and Andrea behind us, um, we have Naval Ravikant this week, uh, founder of Angelist, which is... Wait, what is that? Well, we're going to find out what that is. Okay. Great question. It's super, great super smart guy. Super smart guy. Like off the chart smart. Right. And, and if you don't get something from this... Probably should stop listening to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but, but perfect. All right, let's go see if you're but smart enough subs- to watch the podcast. We want subscribers. We want subscribers. So uh, that's the way we we survive here. We don't take um, subsidies. We have no sponsors. So so please get out there and share this. That's how we get ahead and are able to feed Marion. <laughs> All right, let's go learn about some angels. <laughs> We are here, Spartan Up Podcast in Malibu, Navarro Ravikant, the founder of, did I say that right? Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> the founder of AngelList, which is a, a giant business, I mean, global. Yeah, we're kind of a website that helps startups uh, raise money, find talent, and find customers, and started that in 2010. Uh, but you more crushed a side it. Project. I mean, yeah, more built it up as a business starting in 2013. Now we have got uh, tens of thousands of startups on the platform, over a thousand that have raised money. Uh, we've got uh, 10,000 that have hired. We've got millions of people on there looking for jobs. Uh, and we also have a, product, a property called Product Hunt, which basically helps companies launch to their customers. So um, with me, I, there's no plan on these pockets. Sure. We, we just start going down uh, certain roads. What's interesting, what I just heard, was you have had the opportunity to talk to a lot of potential startups. What's the diff- what would you say the key differences are between success and failure? Like what, yeah. what does one startup have versus one that doesn't make it half. Uh, luck is a big one. <laughs> Timing is everything. Right. But you kind of make your own luck, you know, if you stay at it long enough. So I, I see entrepreneurial efforts often fail, but good entrepreneurs don't fail because they stay at it. Right. Uh, I, I don't believe in this model where uh, you basically pick something to do and then you struggle at it your entire life. I think rather a lot of life is about finding what you're meant to do uniquely. I mean, the combinatorics of human DNA are staggering. You've got 7 billion people on this planet. Right. You're never going to meet any two people who are even vaguely alike and can substitute for each other. So every human being is unique and what you're going to be amazingly good at is the thing that you do for fun the thing that you're passionate about no one can compete with you on something that you find entertaining sure. right no matter how much hard work they put in because because for you that's not work right. uh, i consider the definition of work to be the set of things that you have to do that you don't want to do and if you like what you do then it's, then not, it's work. not work all right but but uh even if you uh really love what you're doing and it's not work you've got to i still have to get on the computer all day and answer 600 emails even though i love spartan yeah, right. so you, you, when I say, like, uh, you know, if you, there's the old saying, like, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. It's a little exaggerated. It's more aspirational. Sure. Of course, there's all kinds of things you're going to have to do that you don't necessarily want to do in the short term, but it's for a greater cause, for a mission that you believe in. But I would say definitely, you know, this all comes out of desire. We want certain things. We make sacrifices to get those things. You can basically get anything you want out of life as long as it's one thing. That's my learning. If you want to be, you know, rich, you can be rich. You're going to spend your entire life trying to be rich. That's what you're going to work on. You want to be happy. You can spend your entire life being happy. You'll get it. That's what you'll work on. Um, The problem happens when we have multiple desires, when we have fuzzy desires, when we sort of want to do 10 different things and we're not clear about which is the one that we care about. So I would argue that's a great that, point, right? Because um, you want to have a happy family life. Mm-hmm. You want to be rich. Um, can't you want to be happy. Yeah. Can't have everything. Can't have everything. I, I would right. suggest that you basically pick one fervent desire that you have above all else. Right. Find a way to reach that desire where it doesn't feel like work. You enjoy the thing that you're doing so much and on a general high-level basis that it won't feel like work. Then you'll outcompete everybody else. Right. Uh, I think most of life is about searching. It's not about doing. People spend too much time doing and not enough time thinking about what they should be doing. Right. Um, like, for example, finding your spouse, right? The way we treat it is we start dating somebody and then we're like, oh, it's not working out maybe I should go into therapy maybe I should try harder and it's round peg square hole but the reality is now there's 7 billion people in the world there's dating sites everywhere you'll probably meet a total of 100,000 people in your life you'll barely scratch the surface so spending time in a relationship that's not working struggling to make it work is wasted time it's like Google search you should hit the back button and try the next result and uh-huh. technology enables that uh-huh. I think that's true of work also you know you grow you, up you saying just, you just instantaneously created created 1 million divorces <laughs> like, possibly <laughs> but then in the future I've created 1 million stable 
single there marriages, <laughs> right? So it's uh, you need the angel. You need the angel list of, of dating. <laughs> I, I mean, Tinder is out there, right? right? And there's a bunch of others out there. Tinder's yeah. not the only one, but it's a good one. Uh, but I, in general, I don't believe anymore in this model of struggle. I believe in a model of flow. It's funny. I have another. I assume you're from India. Yes, long time ago. I, I have um, my best friend is Indian and. Um, him and I battle over Spartan because everything is about struggle and yeah. fight and, and going to obstacles. And he's always like, why does it have to be that way? <laughs> he d- well, he the, tries the, to avoid it completely. The best warriors are the ones who find it fun. You know, it's right. like Jocko Willink. You know, like, that's his life. That's sure. what he lives for. That's sure. like, if I were trying to compete with that, I would lose horribly. So I go back to this idea that most of life is a search for who and what needs you the most and who and what you need the most. And when you find that fit, it just works. How do you works. find it? Just keep looking. It'll feel right. There's lots of data points. You know, it's like... The, no, but, but you're sitting on the couch right now. Back yeah. up, right? Yeah. 10, 15 years ago, you're sitting on yeah. a couch and you don't know what you want to do with your life. So for the person yeah. out there, how do they... That's the big struggle. I think for everybody, yeah. there is something that they do that other people think is work but is effortless for them. Their friends will basically say to them, like, oh, I can't believe you can just do that without hating it. Right. Everyone's got something like that. Right. And whatever that thing is, you can build a career out of that. That's the beauty of being such a large planet. Because if you're that good at it, you probably love it. And, and you're going to be better than anybody else because right. you'll be doing it for fun when they're doing it for work. And eventually right. they'll tire out when the results aren't there and they'll give up. And a lot of the results now, the, the world is a very efficient place, right? There's lots of podcasters, there's lots of runners, there's lots of TV shows, there's lots of writers. The world is very efficient. So the people who succeed are the ones who are irrationally passionate about something. So they're not doing it for the money. But you just need to be patient. This is the problem. You, it takes 10 years to build a career in anything. It takes... It takes 10 years to minimum to raise a child. It takes 10 years minimum to build a business. It takes 10 years to build a career. I, I think so. you're awesome because um, I, I, I built three main businesses in my life, and each one of them I didn't get paid for about eight years, yeah. right? And yeah. so people will say you're crazy, but I feel like it's about an eight or 10 year thing. Minimum. Yeah, because right? the world's an efficient place. There are no yeah. get rich quick schemes. Yeah. If you see a get rich quick scheme, that's somebody else trying to get rich off of you. All right. That's a good one, too. Yeah. You're like. Um, like a whiz- wizard. <laughs> I tweet a lot, so Twitter forces me to gather yeah, my yeah, thoughts on 140, 140 characters. Right? Exactly. I hope you're not sitting still while you listen. If you are, you better get a burpee break in. You are definitely going to want to join us next week. This is one of Johnny's uh, really good buddies. He's just coming back from this Arctic expedition, Ray Zahab. Considered one of the greatest explorers of our time, a Canadian, eh, sure. like you, Johnny. So how can they make sure they're not going to miss us? Well, I'll tell you, you don't want to miss any of our episodes, but especially this one. What you want to do, whether you're listening on iTunes or watching on YouTube, subscribe. Then you'll get notifications. More importantly, share. Tell everyone you know about this great show. Thanks so much for being part of our mission. We're trying to rip people off the couch, change lives. You can be part of that. Thanks so much. So let's apply your learnings um, with, with AngelList. Um, to somebody out there starting a business. Right? Yeah. So Angelus was somewhat an accident of history. I didn't yeah. start it as a business. I okay. started as a labor of love. It started as Venture Hacks, which was, in a, which was educating entrepreneurs on how to raise venture capital. Right. Then Angelus was just a list of angels that they could reach out to, and then it sort of grew into a business. So it wasn't intentional in that sense. It was just a public service that kept getting bigger and bigger. Right. And there's a day when the demand for that public service would disappear, and I'm not going to be torn up about it. I mean, right. obviously, I want to do well for my investors and people working with me. Um, but I I will flow to something else in life. Life is big. You know, it's a big universe out there. There's a lot to do. Uh, I try not to have expectations of what I'm doing next or where things are going to go because then you close yourself off to the opportunities that the universe is constantly dropping all around you. It's just you have to go pick them up and you have to be aware enough to notice them. And when, if you're too single-minded with your desires, you're not going to notice new opportunities to grow that are emerging. It is true. Right? I'm thinking back, as you say that, to the neighborhood I grew up in. Yeah. Right. Our minds want to keep it exactly as it was with the same people, but the reality is, I go back twenty. It's a different place, completely different place. I don't even want to be there, right? And and in fact, like the worst thing that could have happened to you was if you'd gotten all the desires. If everything you wanted in life had actually happened, you'd be living in your hometown, be married to your high school sweetheart, you'd be doing your first job, but you'd be the boss at Dunkin' Donuts or whatever your first job was, right? right? right. So you have. So the 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 world doesn't always give you what you want, but it often gives you what you need. And for that, you just have to be willing to accept that. Yeah, maybe this is not the the right place or the right time for me, and I just need to move on. And that's the patience thing. 
Flow. I would call it just flow. Patience is hard. I'm not the most patient person either. So these are some. some I noticed of these, there was a yeah. few minutes we had to wait for the podcast. You yeah. were like, r- 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 yeah, go. because <laughs> life is short. I'm dying every minute at a time, right? Sure. It's a, it's a, you, you, we've been dead for 13 and a half billion years. That's a lot. That's how long from the Big Bang till now. Yeah. Universe will be around 70 billion years. Right. You're around for 50, 70, 100 years. Right. You're, it's a blink of, of a firefly in the night, one time, right? right. You're, you're just yeah. barely here. So you got to make the most of every minute, which doesn't mean that you chase some stupid a desire for your entire life what it means is that like every second that you have on this planet it's very precious and it's your responsibility to make sure that you're happy and you're interpreting everything in the best possible way happiness could be could be uh, i'm just gonna go drink all day at the bar that's pleasure that's not okay. so okay. happiness is one of these bad words and i'm all, almost sorry to bring it up because okay. it's an overloaded word it's like right. it's like friendship or love it could mean anything to anyone right. uh to me uh happiness is an internal trait that comes out of being peaceful and accepting of whatever is going on around you uh it's that sense that nothing is missing in this moment Right. So if you have the sense that something is missing in this moment, a.k.a. a desire that will pull you out of this moment and will make you unhappy. Mm-hmm. Our natural state is to be happy. If a child is unhappy, you say, what's wrong? If an adult is really happy, you say, why are you happy? <laughs> right? It's a little yeah. weird. So yeah. I think we're born with happiness. We're intrinsically happy creatures. But we become unhappy because our egos create desire. The desire pulls us out of the moment, says something is missing right now, and then we chase that, and then we wonder why we're unhappy. And then we try to drown that sense of loss out through pleasure. And pleasure comes through drugs, drinking, partying, sex, whatever. Right could even be extreme sports. It's all just trying to forget ourselves. Um, yeah, and there. I think there we're are ways past we got that. The, I got the, I'm the extreme sports um, problem guy. And we, we all have it. I mean, yeah. we, we're all looking for ways to forget ourselves because yeah. we often are our own worst terrors. We're our own worst taskmasters. We're always arguing with ourselves, disciplining ourselves, uh, wanting things, then not wanting to want things, you know, fantasizing about things, regretting things. Yeah. It's this constant monkey mind loop that's running in your head. That's why now meditation is in vogue because people are starting to realize, like, maybe that's not how I'm meant to live. That's not how I'm meant to survive. Sure. You know, 300 years ago, or even, even forget 300 years ago, five years ago, pre-smartphones, seven years ago, you weren't constantly being pulled out of your present reality into your phone, being like, this constant little addiction. We're like pigeons now in BF Skinner's experiments, you know, pressing little levers to get dopamine hits. That's right. Um, so yeah. we've been reduced to that. And it's really important to be cognizant of, uh, first you get to a peaceful state where you feel like nothing is missing and I'm okay with this moment. Then you can add your desires very carefully one by one. That's um, a, a hard state for most people. I'm, Right? I mean, that's, yeah. that's a challenge. It is a challenge because we've unconsciously been led there through desires that we copy from other people. Right. Most of our desires are picked up through society, what other people are doing, what my friends are doing, what my brother's doing, what my classmates are doing, what right. my wife wants, etc. So we copy those desires and then we make them part of ourselves and we drive forward, drive forward. But really, what do you really need? I think deep down, nobody is doing it for themselves. Deep down, everyone thinks they're fighting for a cause or they're helping out some downtrodden person or it's for their family or whatever. But when it comes down to what you actually need, you need a little bit of food, a little bit of water, a little bit of place to put your head. What do I say all the time? I'm not crazy. I'm with the smartest guy on the planet right (laughs) now. And I'll tell you what, when I started doing these crazy races, right? It became clear one day. I was like, this is the most peaceful place ever because yeah. all I want is water, food, and shelter right now. Yeah. I don't want anything else. I'm not chasing That's anything. Right. I just want water, food, and shelter. That's right. And I, I couldn't really um, describe why that was so peaceful, but you just yeah. nailed it. And that's what everybody wants. Right. And, and then that's it. But and we get away that. from that. Exactly. Right? We, we create these constructs of desire that we copy from each other on top. It's, it's really important to sit down sometime, close the door, turn off the lights and just sit there by yourself and watch your mind. Don't even judge it. Don't even argue with it. Right. Don't even fight it. Just watch the thing run out of control. Your mind is like a monkey that's running around flinging feces and throwing bananas everywhere. It's impossible to control. Yeah. And ask yourself, how did I become like that? Because when you were a child, you weren't like that. Right. Look at any two-year-old. They're not like that. They live very much in the moment. They don't have constant, uncontrollable thoughts about the past or the future. And that's what keeps them happy. So how can you uncondition some of these things that you don't want anymore running through your head it's possible but it's different for everybody sure you're awesome thank you do you guys get enough out of that because um you're gonna have to watch this three or four times <laughs> not at all <laughs> you have any big books you. or anything people should um, uh, i'm go- mostly on twitter as uh-huh. at naval at n-a-v-a-l you got that um, at naval i also twitter. did uh, two two podcasts with tim ferris um yeah but twitter is probably the best way to kind of keep up follow with follow me. yeah cool we're going to have it. you out at a Spartan race. Thank, uh, we're going to get you back to fit enough, water, fun. food, and shelter. We're <laughs> getting you there. Right. I'll, I'll have to live my own talk. Thank you. Right. Or walk my own talk. Thank you. 
So that blew me away. Uh, honest to God, that one was like drinking from a fire hose. That guy just point after point nails things one after another. Um, all business. Yeah. He's all business. Incredible. I when I was standing next to him, he's, there was no waste of time. Yeah. Yeah. But, but so chill about it. Like, yeah. you know, you get some guys roll business that are wound up like a top. Yeah. This guy just drops wisdom after wisdom. Incredible. So, so his whole thing, this whole angel list, um, I, I love how he said that it didn't start out as a business. It started out sort of as a, as a passion project, just something that he was doing that it evolved into really filling a need and actually turned into a, a pretty enormous enterprise. But that happens a lot. I mean, that's how Spartan happened, right? Yeah. I mean, any, any business to his point where you're going to, there's no business where you're not going to put in all your time for a decade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It better be something that you love. Yeah. It better be a passion project. If it's not, you're going to quit. Yeah, well, that's what he said. It's going to take that long to be successful, and if you're not enjoying it, what did he say? He said, he said uh, you, the business doesn't fail, an entrepreneur fails, right? Is that right? Well, yeah. And, 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 you got to be able to have the uh, Yeah, although he said, he said a true entrepreneur won't fail. They'll eventually find the thing that they're good at that they enjoy doing because that's what it's going to take to get there to the finish line. Uh, he said everyone is unique, right? Everybody's yep. got their own set of DNA, so there's 7 billion people on the planet. Every one of those people, or no two are the same, so each has its unique abilities, its traits, its strengths, its weaknesses, Find your strength and play yeah. to that strength is, yeah, what, yeah. is what you need to do to become successful slash happy. Yeah. Um, and then he talked about how pleasure doesn't equal happiness. That's right. You it's know, fleeting. I, right. So I guess the pleasure is, as we would think, of just a quick, pleasurable mm-hmm. moment, whereas he's talking a much greater happiness in life and spirit and yeah. mindset and the rest of it. He was a little Buddhist. He, oh, well, yeah, he, he was. Very. He, he was. He did yeah. seem that way, right? Yeah. I mean, you're right. He just... He was a very succinct speaker who had his his thoughts. Uh, he, he talks about that he's got a Twitter, and he's learned to 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 think. He probably has always thought that way, but that is that's enhanced his ability. And he just says it, says it, says it. Guys, some of us, me, you, you know, we start talking and hopefully find <laughs> something along the way. But he already knows it ahead of time, and it's. Yeah. A, Bullet, 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 bullet. Well, and, and make par- your own luck. Part of that, I love the way he said it. When he, he, he put it in context, he said, the universe is 13.5 billion years old. Humanity is 100,000 years old. Uh, you're going to be here for 70 years. He, he said it's the blink of a firefly. I've heard it called a fart in a fan factory. Mm-hmm. But the idea is you're here for such an incredibly short period of time. Make the most of it. Enjoy every second of it. But that's what you say about his efficiency comes from the fact that I'm only here for 70 years. I'm going to get stuff done. I, I had seen him an hour after we did the podcast. He was walking by, and I, you know, I went to stop Remember you? Well, I, went to stop, <laughs> I went to stop and say hello, but like you could see, he was like, "I got fourteen thousand days left on the planet. Can't talk." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, incredibly powerful. I, yeah. I, I'm grateful he took the time with you because I, I learned a ton from that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny with these podcasts. I mean, they're they're all good. We, I mean, you, you pick people for a reason, but there are some of them you go back and watch again and, out, and yeah. again and again. Barry Hearn, I've probably watched that one oh, twenty, thirty times. He's a, yeah, I'll watch this one twenty, thirty times. Yeah, because right. again, this is a guy who said something. By the time you were thinking about what that actually meant, trying to get it to soak in, he'd already dropped two or three other more bombs. Yeah, that just other goes nuggets. That. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute, you know? Yeah, that yeah. Goes what with does that mean? Those, I mean, everything that he says is like going to be the most he's as impeccable with his word as he possibly can because that's what allows you to deliver the greatest message in the most efficient amount of time. So it the, makes you like absolutely. I, I I could learn some. How does this tie into an ecosystem? Huh. Well, you know, like ecosystem functions, right? Everyone, like the burdock is always going to be dynamically accumulating all the nutrients out of the soil that it possibly can. There's no wasted time in the cycle of a plant's life. It's dynamically accumulating nutrients and then it's coming out, it's flowering, it's going back to seed. It gives you those nuggets, like you guys are talking, that has all the genetic technology that you need to carry an entire culture's, like, foodstuffs in a gourd. Right? So, I mean, there's no waste in nature. Everything either goes to make soil or goes to regenerate and perpetuate itself. So, this guy's just a little seed of knowledge. I, I think, I think great, great question, challenge Challenger again. I think Joe had said, <laughs> boom, ecosystem. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of the ecosystem. It's not my e. Do you say ecosystem? No, I'm kidding. But, 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 but no, no, you, he did so say ecosystem. But, but it's funny. I was actually thinking ecosystem. And the idea when he said, I don't pretend that I'm the most important person or this most important project. This is great, but somewhere along the way, someone will come along and do something better. This will peter away, and I know that's going to happen, and I just great trust. Great mindset. Yeah. And, and very it, hard mindset, but, very, but awesome. Yeah, to, to, to not be attached to his own success. Yeah. No. And, and so, so, you know, speaking of ego system, it's the idea of, and then I'll find something else, and, and that we find the universe will continue to provide, which is pretty amazing. So. But again, but again, like so many of the people that we've been talking to this season are like these great 
networkers and connectors, mm -hmm. right? And so with our new ecosystem that has so many startups, I mean, maybe there were always a lot of startups, but it seems like now within the business ecology, like every single person has a new great idea to fill some niche that hasn't been fulfilled. And he like that is just facilitating people to be able to find those opportunities mm -hmm. in that new ego system. With that said, With that we are, we are going to check out here. We're checking out. Go to spartan.com slash podcast. Learn more, watch more, and share more because we don't survive without you helping us get subscribers. Talk there to you, you soon. Go. Absolutely. Nice. Thank you for watching another epic story of success. If you like our message, please share Spartan Up with your friends and subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you catch our show, maybe in the woods. Spartan Up is brought to you by Spartan Race. To find a race near you, visit Spartan.com.